Okay, so I'm here today and I'm going to be trialing a beach palette. So a coastal um, inspired blues with a bit of silver. And I've mixed up quite a few different shades of blue. A few dark, a few medium, some iridescent, some aquas, uh, and a few greens as well. So just gonna do a little bit of a practice run with a swipe here on this little guy. Um, so for my iridescent, very pale baby blue that I wanted, I wanted a really light colour in here as well. Um, I've used three different um, colour up pigments. So I started off with the base, which was the most, the most one I put in was the Interference Blue Pearl from Colour Art. That's a bling it pigment. Um, I then put probably half of that amount of the interference green and a very, very small um, scoop of the Stargazer, which is a pale kind of bluey colour, like a light blue pale colour. And I've come up with a really nice kind of iridescent pastel baby very pale kind of blue color but it's got a tinge of a turquoisey sparkle in there because of that green so that's going to be that color i was looking for something very specific so i took the three pigments to to get that out okay the cobalt teal um i've got here the that doesn't look like the sky blue Sky blue. Okay, that must be the sky blue. We'll just go get the bottle and make sure. Okay, that is the sky blue. Looks a little bit different in the container, so uh, it's got a nice rich colour after I've mixed it with the wet stuff. Um, so that's the sky blue, that's a colour art primary elements and I wanted to add in a silver or a gold so I've gone for a silver being the blues and I always use gold so just something different so that's a color art bling it true silver uh, and lastly I needed a dark color so I've either got to choose from these three so I'm going to be using a different one for each trial today with this run of beachy colors um, this one here is a little bit ultramarine looking and it also has two different colors in it this seems to be getting really confusing but i promise you it's simple once you mix them in together um, so sapphire and ice is a beautiful uh, color up primary elements color but i wanted to give it a little bit of a purpley sort of kick so I've just put a little bit of the boysenberry the colour art primary elements boysenberry in there as well just to give that a little bit of a tiny bit of a warm purpley tinge to that one um, but I'm not going to use that one as my dark colour in here I want to use my thalo blue which is um, a basic block colour there from which one did I use? My uh, Derivan Matisse, Thalo Blue. Uh, and just for later on's sake, when I do my next one, this is uh, Rich Cobalt. So that's a primary elements colour art one as well, Rich Cobalt. It's probably the nicest, juiciest dark blue that they've got in the line, in the range. Um, so... We might actually, yeah, we might save that one for the next one. So basically what I've got here is a calculated assortment of the colours that I want to use. So I don't want all pigments because sometimes, you know, they can sink down and kind of some of them can disappear. Some come to the top, some go to the bottom. You really need some tube paint colours in between to help hold up um, your pigment mixes so because I've got the three pigment mixes here 
Um, I wanted to have my two block colours, which is my phthalo blue and my cobalt, cobalt teal. Um, so I'm kind of going to layer them. I'm going to put my cobalt teal on the bottom. Then I'm going to have all of my pigment colours and then I'm going to finish off with the darker colour, which is going to help the cells pop out, which is the phthalo blue. Okay, so... I've chosen a really small board here because it's it is really a practice. So let's get cracking. I'm just going to do a simple split swipe for this one, just so that I can see how these colours are going to interact together, and whether or not I want to make any changes before I go bigger. Right, that's the cobalt teal done. Now. I'm thinking to myself at this point, you know, I've put my first colour on. Now I want to think forward to what my last colour is going to be. So it's going to be the phthalo blue. What do I want under that phthalo blue? So I don't want another dark colour because that's not going to be contrasting enough against that on top. So thinking from the top layer down so that I can think what to put on this next. So I would probably choose one of the two lighter colours. Um, and then I would put the medium colour on top of that and then another light one and then the dark. So I'm going to go to silver and there is a reason for that. You know, the darker and the lighter colours, they just, they contrast better when they split into cells. Um, if you want to see the definition of those cells more, then you put lighter and darker colours or transparent and opaque if that's, that's how you roll. Um, and that makes a really big difference to the definition of the cells and how much you can actually see those cells coming through. Okay, so now I've got my sort of medium depth colour here, which is the sky blue. Just going to pop that on top like that. Probably don't need too much of all these colours because it's such a tiny board. Then I'm going to go for my triple mix where I've made my pale iridescent blue. And I'm going to put that underneath this phthalo blue so that it really, those cells really define. Okay, last one. Do you know what I've just realised? I don't think I've even got any white paint mixed up. Would I do something so stupid? Probably. Okay, hmm. Do I have anything mixed up? I don't even have my white mixed up. I might have to do that quickly. Otherwise, we're in strife. Or the only colour I've got mixed up that I can use on the top is the pink. Holy moly! What have I done? Um. Okay. So our beachy painting is going to turn into something a bit radical from the circus, but anyway. Um, I don't have my white mixed up that I normally use, so I'm going to improvise. This is my only top colour I've got mixed up, so we're going to go for this one. It's going to be a bit crazy and weird, but I don't want that paint to sit there while I go and mix a white up. Talk about not being prepared. Oh, I don't want to break tradition and be prepared. That would be abnormal of me. Totally just winging it through with no organisational skills here. So this is working out much better than just you try to mix up that white really quickly and this would have started to set and um, do all kinds of weird yucky stuff so do what you must at the time gosh this takes so long to come through this pink but they're so beautiful when they do they're really popping out I just wrecked my nice clean there. So I'm just going to wait here 
sometimes with the swiping, you know, you see me and a lot of other people as well blowing here to get the cells to come out more. Um, I sometimes have luck swiping along in a stripe with something smaller, like maybe one of these spoons. Um, but today I'm just going to let that really get going and just develop. I can see that beautiful triple color iridescent blue that I've made there is just beautiful. It's coming through so nice and I haven't even put resin on it yet. So I'm just going to see if I can get as many of these cells to pop up in the middle as possible before I pick that up. Um, and then I'll go mix up my white. <laughs> I definitely wasn't sipping on wine then either. It's totally water. Okay. See how lots of them have come up now? Um, just while we waited those few moments for me to have that sip on the water. Um, yeah, there's heaps more have come through now. So that's going to tilt probably quite nicely. If anything, I've just got way too much paint on here. So it's going to be a bit disappointing to lose some of that cell action. So as usual, just tipping it over the edge and waiting for it to... Oh wow, you should see that there. Looks like an earring. Um, waiting for it to just sort of go down the sides there. Um, before we decide to go back the other way. About this pink, it's a little bit runny. It looks pretty cool against the silver, though. I really do not use silver, I don't like it. Well, I thought I didn't like it, but today I know I've just worked out I love it. It's just not really my I'm a gold girl, you know. I don't wear silver jewelry, don't really like it that much. Um, but I love gold, I really loved rose gold. Um, for years and years and years, nobody was wearing rose gold. It was just something that was a bit more unique. Lots of people just sort of going for the yellow gold. And for a really long time, I sort of had this obsession with the rose gold. And you could barely find anything rose gold in the shops. Um, and then the old rose gold homewares trend started. And literally everybody's home was just full of rose gold, bloody fruit bowls, candle holders. Then the jewelry started coming and I started to feel not so unique anymore because everybody was just sort of wearing the same color. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we don't have our white on the top, but we've managed to save this painting from a disastrous uh, ending by using whatever I had mixed up ready to go. So that's quite cute. I think that I've got a niece that's going to absolutely love this painting. Um, she loves the beach and she loves pink and purple so that's where this one's going to go. Lucky girl! It's beautiful. I definitely need to show you that after resin because yeah, don't know how I can show you that shimmer here. You can kind of see it if I can get that light to go properly. A warm light would be better, but yeah, you see what I mean. Right, time to go and um, get that white paint done. And I'll be back for the real deal.